Hello and welcome to Brannock's Reviews, a very quick and um, slapdash video that I'm making here. I've been asked uh, by a friend of mine just to talk about the different versions of Superman that you can get um, in well with this franchise on Blu-ray. And the versions that I opted to own were these ones here. Now, um, obviously in this franchise, technically Supergirl is canon. Not really part of this discussion, so I'm going to exclude this. It's not everybody's favourite film. It's not the best film. Um, in fact, I'm not even going to go there, to be honest. Just kind of threw it out there. You can't get this film on Blu-ray. I just don't think there was enough demand for it, to be fair. So uh, let's exclude that from the discussion. Now, there is also a 4K uh, version of the original Superman from 1978, which I don't own. I have no intention of owning, because from what I understand, it's the theatrical cut only. Um... There was an extended cut that I seem to remember got a DVD release back in the early 2000s and then since Blu-ray came out it's been available on that as well. So I haven't gone back to the theatrical cut of the first Superman film in well over 15 years and I have no intention of doing because the extra stuff that you get in the Superman extended cut um, way outweighs the benefit of just watching the standard theatrical cut, but in 4K. Um, it would be really nice to see the extended cut in 4K, but I value the cut of the film having everything in there being more important than just the quality of the film. I'd rather see the complete film um, just in normal high def in 1080p than the well, a reduced cut of the film in 4K. So there's different ways of looking at it. There's no uh, right or wrong. I mean, some people might, might view it differently, but uh, that's just why I own the versions that I own, just to explain that anyway, in case somebody says that there's something missing here. So let's look at the box sets. Now, there is another Superman Blu-ray box set that I think came out before this, and I think it has the five films. So we're talking about the original four films with Christopher Reeves, and then the um, Brandon Routh one from 2006, which technically is a sequel. Um, so let's just say the five Superman movies. I don't think that that version includes the extended cut of Superman 1 and the Richard Donner cut of Superman 2 from memory. This is a definitive box set to get. So that was something that was asked of me um, before I made this video. So let's look specifically at what you get with this because uh, there's quite a few different uh, things here. Now, pretty much sums it up on the back, to be honest. Um, you've got two different cuts of the original Superman. So like I said, the theatrical cut and the expanded edition, that's what they call it. There's various different ways of looking at extended cuts, director's cuts, uh, expanded editions, different spins on these things, but it's effectively a longer version. It's got some really good stuff on there as well as the, the expanded edition, uh, like I say, so I wouldn't really want to go back to watching the original theatrical cut. Um, Superman 2 is a slightly different story because the Richard Donner cut, as it refers to here, there's a backstory to this and it gets complicated. I'll do my best to explain very quickly. There are better videos on the internet than mine that explain this and go into specific detail. But basically what happened is Richard Donner was directing the first two Superman movies pretty much back to back. Some of the things were filmed um, pretty much mixed up together. Uh, they did that with the new, um, the last two Avengers movies, to be honest. Uh, scenes were filmed um, quite surprisingly in, in orders that you wouldn't have expected them to be filmed in. For example, uh, Brie Larson filmed her scenes for Avengers Endgame before she actually made her film Captain Marvel, even though that film got released before Avengers Endgame. So uh, similarly with the Superman 1 and 2 that Richard Donner was directing, uh, they were pretty much filmed at the same time. So bits were filmed by Richard Donner for Superman 2, um, but he got fired pretty much um, before they could really get through Superman 2. So another director came on board and gave it a quite a different direction to what was originally intended. But this happened before the first Superman was finished. So basically that affected the, the first Superman film as well. So the end of Superman 2 originally had Richard Donner actually finish the movie originally 
would have ended with um, Superman making time go backwards uh, by flying around the planet really quick. So what happened when he got when Richard Donner got fired? Um, he took that ending that should have been in Superman two, and he then changed the ending of the first film and put that at the end of the first film. So that's all well and good, and that ending pretty much is included in both Superman films, where he makes time go backwards, uh, in both cuts of the first Superman film, I mean. But obviously, um, when Richard Donner came back sometime around 2006-ish to do the Richard Donner cut of Superman 2, he went back and did what he originally intended to be the ending of that film, where Superman flies around the planet and makes time go backwards again. Um, but it shouldn't have been he does it again, because had he not got fired, that wouldn't have been the original ending of Superman 1. But it is, that's basically ingrained in this. So effectively, to, to have done the job right when they went back and redid uh, Superman 2 as the Richard Donner cut, technically they should have also gone back and changed the first film as well, so it didn't have the same ending twice. Um, but to be honest, who cares? I mean, that's that's just... Technically, they should have done that, but um, it was such a great achievement and quite a rare thing in cinema history, uh, having something like this where the original director goes back 25 years later um, due to popular demand, pretty much, to finish the movie that he started making. And if you watch the documentaries that are included on this, where uh, Donna is basically going back in the editing room you can see it's quite an emotional thing for him as well um, I've always liked Richard Donna as a, as a as just a generally as a person I've seen him in interviews and stuff and uh, he's, he's quite a decent guy so uh, that's interesting to go through anyway so there's basically four films there just across the, the first two movies uh, the theatrical cuts and then the expanded edition of number one and then the R Richard Donna cut of Superman 2 uh, three and four, pretty much, um, not much they can do with those, unfortunately. Uh, they were what they were. They're included. Superman Returns was supposed to be Superman 3 version 2. It was basically cutting out uh, Superman 3 and 4 and saying, well, this is the true successor to Superman 2. Kind of like what they're doing with the new Terminator movie, which I spoke about in my last video. It's basically supposed to retcon numbers 3 and 4, similarly. Um, but um, as it turned out, I think Superman 3 was actually a better film than Superman Returns. Not so sure about Quest of Peace, maybe, but uh, yeah, um, pretty terrible was Superman Returns. Anyway, so that's not it. That's that box set, and, and it was pretty much definitive and great to own that, but then, I think it was last year, this came out, and it was basically the uh, three-hour-long TV version, so you've got, like, the extended version of Superman, but now you've also got this three-hour-long TV version, because what happened was, um, when this was due to be aired... I think it was on American television, to fit the um, schedules for... Um, for American television they have to be a certain length and I believe what they did to make this a big event they basically cut it into two halves went out and filmed Just it was just filler really to be honest there's nothing too amazing in this um, just for the sake of having two 90 minute slots to put on TV I think it was over two nights but yeah two night television event Um so that's basically why they extended this. They've done this with other films as well, such as uh, the original Halloween. There's like a TV um, version where they went back some time later and filmed extra bits just to kind of fill it out and pad it out. Although, to be honest, I think that, that, that they did a better job with that than they did with this. But, you know, if you're a hardcore fan like I am, uh, it's definitely interesting. I personally prefer just the normal extended cut that came out um, in the early 2000s of the first Superman film. Um, I don't necessarily think that Extended is a magic uh, ticket to, to amazing awesomeness with movies. I think you can go a bit too far, and I think that's what they did with this. But again, like I say, it is interesting. So ultimately, if you want to um, watch these, originally I, w I would recommend you just watch the Extended well, the expanded edition of the first film, 
the Richard Donner cut of the second film, maybe. Uh, if you haven't seen the original cut of Superman 2, just the normal version, I'd still watch it because there's plenty of stuff in that that's not in the Richard Donner cut, to be honest. Um, I'd probably ignore 3, 4 and Superman Returns. And maybe at some later point come out just for interest and watch a three hour long TV version. But uh, like I said, I don't know how easy it is to get hold of this. I think you can get it off Amazon, to be honest. I've never seen it in any of the shops, to be honest. Uh, and it's unrated as well. Um, but I think I got this off Amazon last year when it came out. I think it was like a fairly limited release, but you can get it. Um, so you can see the, the run times there as well. Um, but it is compatible with UK players as well, obviously. I don't know if it's... It must be multi-region, just generally, because it doesn't seem to indicate on there from what I can see, uh, if that's a concern. But, uh, yeah, I'll leave it there, and I've kind of rambled a little bit. So, uh, Brand X Reviews, if you want to send any mailbag requests or anything, I guess this was kind of a mailbag request. It was something that a friend sent to my uh, inbox, so I'll treat it as a mailbag request. If anyone's got any questions, uh, just let, let me know. Uh, there are better videos on this. I would recommend a channel by Oliver Harper. He's a British guy. He did a very good video on this, uh, and he goes into specifics. I don't do a lot of heavy editing with my videos, editing clips, in just in case I get copyright flagged, but it seems that certain people are immune from stuff like that, guys like Oliver Harper, which is great because he puts out great content, so um, that's all good. Right, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. to see uh, if you're a purist if you're looking at it that way that's fine shit <laughs> bastard <laughs>